Hello, I'm Cheryl Kagan, very proud to be the Senator for Rockville and Gaithersburg. Welcome to episode number 51 of Kibitzing with Kagan. I am thrilled to be here with Mansfield Casey Caseman, a well-known and well-loved Montgomery County leader, particularly in the interfaith and nonprofit sectors. Casey, thank you so much for making the time to chat today. Cheryl, thank you for your time. Absolutely. So you have had a long and rich and very effective career, and we're going to try to get as much uh, coverage as we can for it. Start, if you would, with where you grew up and how you got into um, community <clears throat> engagement. Mm. Well, I was born in North Dakota. <clears throat> I would often be, inter you know, uh, in inter early interviews in my life. Oh, you're the Dakota kid. <laughs> right. Uh, because I was born there, but grew up in Wisconsin. Uh, I was the uh, son of a uh, pastor, um, uh, evangelical, very uh, conservative at that uh, point, uh, who uh, died, though, at the age of 39 when I was 13, the oldest of five. Okay. So what's significant about that is that before his death, uh, he'd also been on the forefront of working with the Native Americans and on uh, race issues, particularly with migrant laborers in Wisconsin and that sort of thing. Uh, and his favorite hero was uh, Jackie Robinson. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we were on welfare until uh, I turned 16, uh, went to work, never worked less than 35 hours a week since, and uh, got us all through uh, college and three through graduate school. And then on from there, did my um, undergrad uh, at a school that no longer exists, one of the uh, you know private liberal arts uh, schools in the Midwest, Westmar uh, College, hmm. and then uh, off to Boston for my theological studies and and on. Amazing. So you uh, were involved with Dr. King, with Martin Luther King. Why don't you tell us a story about that? Oh well, uh, I uh, came out of a very homogenous kind of you know community. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the Midwest, and it's still a bit of a mystery uh, as to why I was just innately committed to uh, racial justice and at the risk of being expelled from Andover Newton Theological School that required you to live in a cloistered environment. This was back in the early 60s, 62, 63, when I went there. So uh, I set up an alternative model for theological education in the urban setting where there were the four of us, the only white dudes within a mile or two of where we were living in a tenement. Wow. And uh, so then we organized uh, around the issue of education, uh, not just by ourselves, but you know, in collaboration uh, with other uh, social justice advocates and, and organized then the first initiative in the North uh, for uh, uh, Martin Luther King. There's a picture, I don't think you see it on the, well, maybe it could right over here on my wall uh, was of him uh, using a megaphone uh, to address the crowd. They wouldn't allow us in the school. And uh, today uh, it bears his name, That's you know, Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, Middle School. Amazing. So maybe this is an obvious follow on question. What inspired you to get into social justice and community outreach work? Well, it was a combination of things, clearly being on welfare ourselves mm -hmm. and being the oldest. It was my mother and I. I mean, I was the little adult. You know? yes. um, we're making decisions and I could see where we were being taken advantage of, uh, mm -hmm. even by friends, including people in the church where my father had served and where she was continuing to volunteer, getting out newsletters and things like that. Uh, she couldn't even get a loan, even though she had a college degree and was certified for, you know, public teaching. Wow. Um, so uh, that experience, that doesn't leave you. And so today I'm automatically um, empathetic uh, with people uh, that are living with, uh, with poverty and with discrimination of, uh, of any kind. Yes. Um, so tell me what brought you to Montgomery County first? You've had such an important role here. Well, one of the things I had done, by the way, I left the United Church on the Green in New Haven, Connecticut, uh, to serve a church in Tallahassee, Florida, where the entire budget was less than my salary in New Haven. Mm. And uh, but again, I had developed a model of 
where you were balancing parish with community, a love with justice, and being as politically engaged as was uh, spiritually grounded. And so while I was there, within three years, uh, we developed a, a statewide network for impacting the state legislature and became the most integrated, uh, highly you know, growing, growing church in Tallahassee. So a conference minister came and told me, you know, Caseman, most churches wouldn't have you, but there's this church in Rockville that seems to be looking for you. <laughs> they had rejected all of the uh, profiles coming in from the Presbyterian Church, or USA, and the United Church of Christ, because they were wanting someone then that uh, was a pastor, but also, again, a community minister and somebody uh, with a clear track record, particularly dealing with, uh, with uh, racial justice. And that was in what year? Uh, that was in uh, 1979. Okay, so I grew up in Montgomery County and Montgomery County in the 70s is a lot different than it is today. And we're gonna get to that evolution. But let me just start with the nonprofit sector. You were a key leader to help establish then called Community Ministries of Rockville, now Community Reach, uh, MANA, Habitat for Humanity. Um, talk, about, talk about your role. And, uh, and how you stepped in, what you saw as the need and, and your role in establishing some of these key organizations. Well, the need there as I saw it again was to, uh, well, to be acting out in our faith. Uh, and if you're really loving as we're called to, to love, well, that means you need to be uh, about justice. <laughs> and if you're about justice, then you need to be concerned about more than, um, you know, helping in a personal way. You need to be impacting the systems that in turn determine the quality of uh, life for others, and in particular for the poor and the powerless, those that are being discriminated against. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yes, I came then with a, a model uh, that meant incorporating a community ministries. And I came, by the way, at a time when laundering had just become uh, exec of what was then known as Community Ministry of Montgomery County now called Interfaith Works. And That's I've right. already kibitzed with Courtney Hall, their new CEO. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, of course, that's a very different model today. Uh, what he and uh, earlier Becky uh, Wagner did was quite different than what Lon and I uh, were doing. We uh, approached this with more of kind of a, a wider lens, kind of a pastoral mm -hmm. uh, lens. Mm -hmm. And so in that first year, by the way, uh, we raised enough money to hire a quarter-time secretary between us. <laughs> <laughs> Big money. And, and for the first 12 years, we had joint staff meetings. Mm. And we really in, <clears throat> in, enjoyed the fact, uh, uh, sure, the, what we had, you know, uh, politicians and other people in uh, for a staff meeting to learn more about what we were doing. They'd want to be clear about now who's on what side. Right. It would be impossible unless we'd say, well, no. And then it'd be further confusing because uh, I could be in Alon's absence testifying or with him on certain issues sure. where I had a little more expertise uh, testifying on behalf of Community Ministry of Montgomery County and CMR at the same time. Yes. Uh, yes. And Lon the same with uh, with the city. Right. Um, I loved Lon. He was, he was such a beautiful man. Um, well, he, he and I see we're committed not just to uh, human service, uh, but our mission was one where uh, we needed to be able to respond instantly uh, to emerging needs. Mm -hmm. And so we'd be bringing together uh, political leaders with some frequency, particularly with the county council and with me, the mayor and council. Uh, to be connecting with their residents that otherwise wouldn't have had uh, a voice. So when you worked so closely together, one of the challenges when I was a funder um, that often gets discussed is the plethora of nonprofits that often do similar missions. If you work so closely together, was there ever any conversation about community ministries in Montgomery County, that old name, and community mm -hmm. ministries of Rockville joining officially, merging their efforts? Oh sure. Oh yes. Yeah, that was that was quite a uh, a natural uh, subject to be uh, discussing. Sure. Uh, and by the way, uh, I had a predecessor that began this, but he was doing it out of Rockville United Church. I wasn't right. incorporated to make it, you know, uh, broader. 
Uh, and at that time, he was just so busy dealing with uh, Rockville, he said, uh, you can organize, your, and he helped them organize the board uh, for the county and then provided space uh, in the place that uh, they, they have their, their base office now. You know, one and that was who? Montgomery Avenue. That was, that was who, the founder? Uh, that was uh, Don McCallum. Okay, yep. All right, yeah. so now one of the most important healthcare providers is the Mansfield Caseman Health Clinic. Uh, right near Rockville Town Center. Why don't you talk about uh, the services that provides and what it's like to be uh, have have an institution that important named for you? Well, my Cheryl, um, <laughs> um, that was a bit embarrassing for me at the time. Uh, I've always uh, seen to it that there was never a, a plaque on my walls, uh, you know, you know, relating to me. It was always connected with the community. I was being paid for it and felt that the people that were supporting me <laughs> were the ones that deserved uh, the credit. But at that time I had, uh, I was in the process, I guess, of retiring uh, when they uh, on their own said they'd like to uh, name that for me. So uh, uh, what an honor. And yes. uh, for me, what made that significant was that I was being told no. I mean, I, we were doing this during a recession Mm -hmm. uh, the mayor and council said no, uh, the county council said no, HHS said no, and so forth. And at that time, Cheryl, it was your predecessor, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Jenny Forehand, serving as the senator mm -hmm. uh, that I think was in charge of the Appropriations Committee uh, that said, if I forgot, it was several hundred thousand dollars matching. And uh, what made it possible, I had a blue ribbon committee. Uh, made up of the deputy from HHS and the director of the you know, primary care coalition, uh, just a recently retired director of medical services for the Peace Corps. I could go on, lawyer, doctor, you know, right. so forth. Right. And so uh, regardless of whether it could or couldn't be done, it was, it was inevitable that it would be done. Yes. And so when, Jenny in terms was of the a... services they're offering now, Cheryl, you can do a better job than I because uh, one of the many things that you've done for the community is to serve as director of uh, was communication and uh, development for the uh, uh, that whole program. I, I love Community Reach, its new name. Uh, and Jenny Forehand was actually on the Judicial Proceedings Committee, but as a senator, she was able to bring funding home for Rockville and Gaithersburg projects, including this one. And I was at that event, at the dedication with you, oh. with County Executive Ike Leggett and, and many others. And that was a, a really wonderful- well, Cheryl, I would just do a little, a little uh, you know, taking, when I was looking back into the records here, you and I have been doing this sort of thing for almost three decades. In other <laughs> years, it'll be three decades, Cheryl, <laughs> that we've been kindred spirits, you know, you like from majors for justice. There you go. Um, so let's pivot to one of the most important of the many important jobs and accomplishments that you've had in your career, which is as interfaith liaison for Montgomery County for the yes. Office of Community Engagement. Um, why don't you talk about that position, how it was established, and how you felt like you were making a difference in that role? Oh, my, Cheryl. Uh, this was a blessing beyond compare. Yeah. You know, I, I can tell I'm already getting a little emotional because beginning as I did with my uh, ministry at the risk of being expelled from a theological school <laughs> that committed to working with uh, you know, Brother Martin Luther King and being very active in the civil rights movement on through uh, the years. In the end, uh, to be uh, invited to serve uh, Ike Leggett yeah. and work with Bruce Adams yeah. in an office that had been set up so that we could do Ike's you know, vision Yep. of embracing uh, the diversity that was coming to our county. Um, it was just an unbelievable gift. Yeah. And so uh, originally for the first couple of years, at least it was 20 hours a week and then 30. But of course, uh, for, <laughs> me, it was a, it's, for me, it was a calling and a blessing. <laughs> so okay. that I end up uh, organizing three working groups and committees made up of uh, people who came uh, with credentials and uh, competence and a commitment uh, to the issues that were even greater than some uh, county employees. And they were doing it as volunteers. Yes. Um, so 
Um, that, and in a nutshell, one indication of what we were doing, the significance of it all, is that we had delegations coming here from 60, 60 countries, Cheryl. Oh my golly. To learn how yeah. we were creating social cohesion and public safety. Amazing. And uh, we were able to do it because we were connected, you see, uh, through from the top down, if you will, with mm -hmm. the county exec and the county council, mm -hmm. and then the most trusted voices in the communities that were most necessary to be at the table, to be heard from, whether we're dealing, you know, with, with, with police relations or dealing with land use, dealing with health, dealing with education, dealing with all of these things. Mm -hmm. There we are, there we are. And by the way, these delegations would come in, they'd always go to four or five. They were in the United States for four, three, about, about three weeks. Uh -huh. We came out as the number one when they were all through, which site was most helpful to you? Montgomery County. That's fantastic. Because it was community centric. It was organized by the faith community. Right. You had faith leaders, Anglican to Zoroastrian together yes. with the police, with education, you know, and, and, and public officials. So um, do you know whether, how many other counties or states or municipalities have a paid position like yours? Nothing quite like it. Okay. Um, in fact, right now I'm doing some writing because a uh, professor emeritus now from the University of California at Berkeley, uh, who has recently retired from a tenured chair in the management of nonprofits, working training, community organizing, um, and, and nonprofits uh, is, has encouraged me to write because he said, Casey, I've been saying this. I've been telling my graduate students all these years, this is what can be done if you work with faith communities, but I don't know where it's being done. Yes. And he, by the way, has been a consultant to other organizations across the country. Right. So, so I have so many more questions. So you talked about uh, Anglican to AstraZeneca, uh, Astro, sorry. I was just going to say AstraZeneca, AstraZeneca, which is my district, Zoroastrian. Um, why don't you, let's go back to Montgomery County's diversity. We know about the ethnic diversity. I talk about the yes. linguistic diversity. I talk about the socioeconomic diversity. Could you tell us about the faith diversity? Um, what challenges and opportunities that presents? Well, uh, it's all but beyond description. Uh, we have um, Eastern and, and Western, we, we, have, we have all of them here. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then uh, a, a part of the gift for me is so that you're Buddhist. Well, being Buddhist is kind of like being Christian. What does that mm -hmm. tell you? <laughs> I mean, there are mm -hmm. at least a couple thousand uh, different ways of being a Christian in terms of the way it's organized. And Jews, I mean, we've uh, got our, our boxes too. Yeah. Yeah. But, but what brings us all together, I've been very careful now, never mm -hmm. ever to have a meeting where we're talking about comparative religion or we're getting into doctrine. Mm -hmm. Where I'm coming from is that the uh, integrity of love is far greater than the purity of doctrine or of, of any particular tradition. Can I say I it, love that it, quotation? The integrity of love, of love, yeah, that's yeah, fantastic. It's far more important. It's greater than the purity of religion. Than the uh, integ yeah, the, the, the integrity of love is far more important than the purity of doctrine. Of doctrine, sorry, yes. Yeah. But fantastic. that was one of the lines, by the way, that was used and kind of called out by the press years back when I was up on charges of heresy. But that's a whole other story. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You, you don't do what I've been doing without, huh? You know, controversial. controversial. Wow. Uh, um, do you want to tell that story now? Oh, oh uh, no, that would be more important just to kind of get on with what's made things more successful uh, okay. here. Well, okay. except in a nutshell, uh, what made me controversial is that when I went in to have standing within the Presbyterian Church, I needed to present my theology of ministry. Yes. And that was back in 79. I was using inclusive language, mm -hmm. a red flag at the point for some people. And I was, uh, you know, again, uh, talking about needing, you know, for me, when you're preaching, you always have the newspaper in one hand and the Bible in the other. Mm -hmm. and you need to be matching community 
with parish, love with justice, and being as politically engaged uh, as you're spiritually grounded. And with our Calvinistic tradition, by the way, we look at elected officials such as yourself sharing a sacred, you know, trust, just like clergy. Mm -hmm. But then our relationship is one that are working together and my supporting you, if you will, as long as what you're doing is consistent with a, a divine sense of justice. Can but I'm also then responsible, Cheryl, I never need to do this with you, is to call you out when I think you're getting off track. That's, yes. that's, that's my calling. Totally, I agree. I don't know if you know this, Casey, but I was a founding board member and served for 10 years on the Faith and Politics Institute. Um, I remember that now. Yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing group and it's how to keep our spiritual values uh, in conjunction with our political and community leadership as elected officials. And, I'm sure uh, I think that's why you've been so effective. Thank you. You, you have that. You've 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 got that, um, and you're also into the arts. And yep. that's, that's another. You know, we, we need the, that. That's part of my own spirituality. It's connecting, you know, with the arts, particularly with nature. Right. And and then being able to work with people like you, we 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 draw energy uh, from each other. Definitely. Um, you mentioned inclusive language. Uh, is that mostly faith inclusion? Was that racial? Was it gender? Was it sexual orientation? Was it like give an idea of what was included well, in 1979? Well, that goes back to a time in history, you see, uh, when women weren't being included right. in, in some of the, you know, like the uh, the vestries of, of churches or mm -hmm. you, know, you look at the national headquarters. Mm -hmm. uh, today, I'm not quite sure where it is with the Presbyterians, but I know within the United Church of Christ, the majority now are, are women uh, mm -hmm. and women of color. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's it's a radical d change right. uh, from what it was, uh, you know, way back. Right. So with the United Church of Christ, uh, it was formed in the late kind of 50s. That's one of the reasons I chose it right. uh, for my own uh, ordination, uh, because of their commitment to, uh, to racial justice. Um, mm -hmm. So one more question on interfaith, which is... Um, I'm curious to know when you have people with different uh, different beliefs, different practices, different traditions, different holidays, what do you find to be the most effective way of bringing them together? Is it is sure. it through prayer, through food, holiday celebration, right. uh, volunteer right. activities? Well, you've like got it, it's, it's common need, common mm -hmm. need, common mm -hmm. need. Uh, one of the things we did with our dialogue on facing our own racism uh, as we had a page uh, where people were to match uh, loving one's neighbor as oneself, which we find in the sacred texts of 14 different faith traditions. Mm -hmm. Hear me, Cheryl? <laughs> 14 different faith traditions. And nobody would ever get it right? right, which was the point. Right. But what it tells us is that when we get to the heart of our faith traditions, as radically different as they're going to be in other ways, right. uh, that's what brings them together. And so once you bring them together around uh, hunger uh, mm -hmm. or around responding mm -hmm. to acts of hate and violence, yes. you get to know each other. Yes. And you begin working together in these working groups and committees. Mm -hmm. Cheryl, you change in some very radical ways. Yes. And all of a sudden you're not preaching the same way. Your newsletters are different. Everything yeah. is different nice. because you've learned uh, that these people that you might have been critical of earlier on, they're your sisters and your right. brothers. You right. love them. And you've yes. grown yourself. Yes. After the um, hate and fear of uh, Muslims came out, I got the former Senate president's permission. And for the first time, actually in history, I brought two faith leaders to jointly give the invocation to the state Senate before we started our business. And I brought my, uh, my rabbi, whom I adore, and an imam that I had met through you, through the Thanksgiving, uh, interfaith Thanksgiving yes, service. Yes, yes. And I brought them together to Annapolis. And I dare say a number of my colleagues might never have, have met an imam before, might never right, have seen right. you know, Jewish and, and Muslim uh, faith leaders yeah. praying together. And what preceded that, Cheryl, is that I could not find a house of worship in Potomac. Yes. 
that would accommodate at that time uh, 12 to 15 Muslims praying for an hour on Friday. Mm. It wasn't that long ago, it was about seven years ago now. Mm. Making a longer story short, what came out of that were a group that came together for the Thanksgiving services. Yes. That first service at your temple. Yes, I was there. You want to remember, Cheryl? It was mm -hmm. one confession after another confession after another confession. We've been across the street from each other. We've been, you know, our properties, you know, <laughs> together. Mm -hmm. And we've never met, we've never talked, we've never worshiped, we've never prayed together. Yes. And so quickly they were organizing at that point, then they got on yes. uh, to having evenings where hundreds would show up yes. to learn about their sacred text. Yes. And and uh, today uh, they're, they're very, 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 very close yes. uh, with the Islamic Community Center of Potomac. Yep. Uh, come to well, know and to love one them. of the many many accomplishments that you helped spur casey um that's so what I happens just have again two more questions before i go to fast five out of all the things that you've done out of all the ways that you built community and made a difference what are you proudest of uh i guess it would be the model uh that i've talked about yeah. and seeing that being so successful uh, in Boston and in New Haven and Tallahassee and then get here in Rockville. Uh -huh. By the way, when I came to Rockville within a year, we had a consultant that worked with us for 16 months and gave me five reasons why Rockville United Church would not survive and I shouldn't take it personally. <laughs> Cheryl, I was just in the process of incorporating community ministries. Wow. What made all the difference was again, this model yeah. of balancing and in the end, we had to add on twice to the facilities at Rock United Church to accommodate the growth. And when I retired, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, transitioned, if you will, uh, yeah. out of uh, community ministries, we had 73 on the staff and a budget of uh, you know a couple of million. Yeah. But also, again, continuing to be primarily concerned with responding to the emerging needs of the community that included, you know, uh, chairing the Caregivers Coalition of Rockville. Unbelievable. So I'd That's say amazing. That's, uh, uh, but then the, 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 where I've been most effective, I think, in living out what I was claiming should be done years earlier, yeah. uh, was working uh, as the Interfaith Community Liaison uh, in the Office of uh, Community Ministries, uh, being able to work again uh, with, with Ike and his team, yeah. Chuck Short in particular in his office, and, then, and Bruce yeah. Adams. Yes. Uh, I have kibitz almost everyone you have mentioned in this in this kibitz I have already yeah. kibitzed with uh, Becky Wagner and Courtney Hall and Bruce Adams and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, you and beautiful Diane have been married for about 42 years. Uh, mm -hmm. What's your best secret to a happy marriage that you'd like to share here? Oh my. <laughs> uh, I would say uh, well clearly, you know, it's, 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 it's love, but for us, a love um, born out of and con continuing to be nourished uh, by a, a common kind of spirituality mm -hmm. um, nice. and, and a commitment again to the same kinds of values. I could not be doing what I'm doing without her. Uh, she's my chief uh, critic and my chief uh, promoter. You know? That's <laughs> so, right. Yeah. That's a perfect combination. That's amazing. All right, Casey Caseman, time for the fast five. So ah. brief okay. questions for folks to get to know another side of you. So first, what is your favorite museum or monument? Oh, my goodness. Um, well, at this point, what I'm gravitating toward automatically, of course, is the Martin Luther King That's what I thought you'd memorial. say. Oh, it, it just has okay. to be. I mean, I, yeah. Sure. Um, question two. If you could get in a time machine and go backwards or forwards to any decade in time, what would you choose and why? Oh, my. Um, I would like to fast forward. Uh, it would need to be at least I think three generations uh, to see you know, how we did right. uh, in dealing with our current crises. I'm, I'm more concerned than ever uh, with my uh, great grandchildren yeah. 
and and their children around the issue of uh, racial uh, mm -hmm. equity, uh, mm -hmm. social equity, uh, the environment, yes. um, you name it. Yep, agreed. Interesting. Who was the most influential person in your life? Um, obviously, uh, Martin Luther King. Uh, by the way, the, the reason for that uh, is that, uh, again, providing security for him, as I did on through several years, uh, mm -hmm. here we are, he's going to be speaking at the gazebo uh, in the Boston Commons, and we ask that the police pull away and let us provide the security. And because you couldn't trust him, you certainly couldn't trust the FBI. Not then, not in Boston. Well, Cheryl, they said, okay. Wow. <laughs> so here we are meeting with uh, Andy Young. It's after midnight. You know, well, how are we going to handle this? And, uh, and at the end, we're, 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 we've gone through it. We know we've got it. And we're going to be, uh, you know, linked arm to arm. Yes. And he reminds us that the media are there not to record his words as much as his assassination. That's what they're waiting for. Mm. And at that point, he specified the press badges that we'd have to look for. But at that point, drop our arms and let them through to do their job. What year was this, Casey? That was two and a half years before the actual assassination. Yeah. And this man and his lieutenants, if you will, were putting their lives on the line every day and night during that period, standing up for a loving, loving of the enemies, you know, overcoming all the barriers. So yeah, um, that's obviously changed my life. Yeah. Um, what is a motto or a piece of advice you would give to the, a younger generation, to young people just starting off in their careers? Ah, believe that the power of love is far greater than all forms of loveless power. Right. You believe that and nourish that and keep connecting, Cheryl, with people like uh, uh, you um, and John Lewis, mm -hmm. most recently. I hope you've read his you know, book, This Truth is Marching On. I have it's, like it's, 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 it's love, yeah. real love, not in any sentimental way, but the kind of love that leads you to love your enemy mm -hmm. that in the end, uh, will enrich your life and make you a far more effective leader. Quick detour, Faith and Politics Institute that I mentioned earlier, hmm. we used to do the um, uh, the 23rd Psalm and we had to yeah. think of someone that we massively disliked or yes. disrespected or disagreed with. And hmm. we had to pray to, and back in those days, like a lot of us would pray to Jesse Helms. Yes. And every yes. phrase yes. we would put in, like, and we'd have to be thinking of him. And it did sort of yeah. cause a pivot. I'm like, okay, he's a person and I don't particularly care for him. And let's wish him well and see whether we can find common ground. It was fascinating. It was, yes. it was a challenge, but it was fascinating. So yeah. Casey. Very valuable spiritual uh, discipline. Yeah. The fifth question, the one that I ask everyone, hmm. Mansfield, Casey, Caseman, what is your hidden secret uh, talent or superpower? What is something you're really good at that most people can't do? Oh my, I, I, I'm, I'm just blanking out on that. I, um, I think anybody can do what I've been doing, though it does require some particular, you know, uh, <laughs> I guess, experience, skills, and so forth. Uh, but my, my, my thing has been primarily one. People have asked me, by the way, maybe this is the best answer I can give you. How are you doing all of this? Right. And I just have always said, isn't it obvious? I need help. I really, <laughs> <laughs> and And I know I live by grace. Uh, so, um, it's just you know putting yourself out there and then being in a position you see to collaborate. I, I'm not doing this. We we are we are we are we are doing it. Right. So I have to tell you that doesn't feel like a very solid answer. I'm I'm still looking for your talent or superpower because you have many. Um. 
Well, I think I bring a blend of uh, administration. For instance, I've, I've known uh, one of the, the first person to hire me for a full-time job uh, had this, this, this line that um, uh, sympathy is no excuse for incompetence. Okay. And I've hung on to that. Uh -huh. uh, and my staffs, by the way, who have stuck with me through the years over double the average tenure for people um, uh, have had to go through annual evaluations and come to value those and program evaluations not done by us but by outsiders yes so that's that's important but the other part is again really loving and caring for people yeah so once you have met made the right match in terms of hiring people or even with volunteers making yes. you've got to be really sure there that the match is going to be one that's going to be mutually beneficial once you've done that uh, then you just you just do whatever you can to be supporting and encouraging them. That's great. So Casey, I suspect this is the longest uh, tibbets that I've had uh, of my of uh, so in, the, in the whatever it's been seven months or something since I started this. Mm -hmm. um, I do have one more question that I'm going to ask you, which is, have you ever thought about a um, writing the story of your life? in some significant way, either for a book, a blog, a, a podcast, like other than this? Well, we're all tempted to do that. And uh, I, I've known from observing others that have gone on uh, before me uh, who on retirement, in fact, I have critiqued their first chapters. Uh -huh. <laughs> and um, it usually doesn't, you know, work out, doesn't, you know, but right. it's, 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 it's therapeutic. Yes. Uh, and it kind of you know grooms the ego and all. And so uh, when and Mike Austin, they're... by the way, this is the the person I'm doing some writing with now, uh, approached me. I, this is what I told him, but he said, "No, no, no, no. You don't understand. The models that you have created here are what we need to get out right. uh, for other public officials." And the, he wants them. You see, in the schools that are teaching uh, management of nonprofits and right. community organizing. This is the fellow in Berkeley. And, and I want, yeah. And yeah. I want them uh, for seminaries and theological schools. Well, I hope for uh, your- but That's not gonna be the story of my life so much as it's what did we do here in Montgomery County? Again, yeah. thanks to Montgomery County. Again, yeah. I didn't, I did, I was invited in by Ike Leggett and Bruce yeah. Adams yeah. <laughs> to work with these wonderful people, including yeah. yourself yeah. that made this possible. Well, I have to say, I really hope you take some time and record some of this some of your stories for your kids, your grandkids, your great, great grandkids for the three generations in the future that, uh, that you, we are unlikely to, uh, to see. So. Oh, it's been a wonderful ride, Cheryl. And, yeah. uh, and who knows what the future holds, Indeed. you know? Uh, the so I really want to thank you for taking the time to kibitz with me and for all that you've done for the residents of Montgomery County, for the nonprofit sector, which we both care so deeply about and for all our neighbors in need. You're wonderful. It's really Girl, been a privilege thank you. to chat. You're always uh, <laughs> life giving and have uh, been an inspiration to me as you are now your newsletters, by the way. Yeah, Cheryl, uh, <laughs> somebody has it right. Uh, and for me, it's been uh, it's on every score across a whole spectrum of issues. Thank you. That's why I, don't you love being, you know, living here in Montgomery County? Yes. Yes. As, as good as I might think I am, you know, I have a real problem even crossing the river, living in some of these places where some friends <laughs> and relatives do. It would be it would be a real test of my uh, yeah, right. uh, spiritual well-being. Well, we're going to wrap up and I'm going to say farewell. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Please stay well, Casey. Best to you and Diane. Take care. Thank you, Cheryl. Peace be with you. Peace and power. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.